And I might tell you, you're the biggest bunch of robbers since... Captain Ebbs, sometimes you appear to be a bloody fool. Look, we are not here to sack you. We're here to promote you. Captain Ebbs, for years you've kept ships like the Floriana afloat and her crew alive. And now, as a sign of recognition, we're going to give you the Queen Adelaide for one trip. Captain Buckle has been taken ill with German measles. If you're a success, we shall consider the appointment a permanency. If not, well, then we'll throw you out. All right? Well, you've heard the news, brothers. I'm sure it's come as a very nasty shock to you all. A new captain's always a very unpleasant experience. The company should have consulted us. It's a dead liberty. Yes. And quite frankly, it raises entirely new problems of administration. What do you suggest, Herbert? Well, we've got to be um, circumspect, Charlie. Eh? In other words, play it pear-shaped. Quite, Bernie. Who is it? It's only me, Arthur. Oh, Arthur. Come in. Sorry I'm late. That's all right. Give yourself a drink. I was just saying, there are only two kinds of captains, those who do and those who don't. Precisely. Now, what we've got to find out is, is he or isn't he? Until then, we've got to be circumspect. Pear-shaped, Arthur. And quite burning. Now, for example, Arthur, how many cigarettes have we taken aboard? Straight now. Two and a half million. Three million. And how many have got um, diverted? A quarter of a million. How many? Well, say half a million. There you are, you see. Now, I suggest that until we find out, we make a small profit margin, say about 5%. Oh. Oh. Can I help you? I don't know. What's your name? What's my name? What's yours? Ebbs, I'm the new captain. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. Can't be too careful, can we, sir? Always on the watch. Chief officer aboard? Now, let me see. I don't think he is, sir. Second officer? Uh, he's at the dentist, sir. Third? Funeral, sir. Fourth? Oh, he's on board, sir. Where's he? Down the bottom of the number one hole, sir. Let's not wake him, shall we? What are those men doing? Loading, sir. Oi! You're going the wrong way. Don't be so silly. Wrong way. Cold storage. That way. Why don't you make up your mind? Can I conduct you at your quarter, sir? No, I'll manage. I expect you've got work to do. Yes, sir. the new captain. What's your job? The, the baby, sir. Carry on. Looking for something? The captain's cabin. Then I might never been there. I'll invite you one day. Is she old man? A new old man.
Captain Epps, sir. Come in. I got delayed, sir. Excuse me, won't you? My friend was taken queer on the chest. Couldn't get the breath. Well, who are you? Bertwitz, sir. Tiny, they call me. I look after all the captains. Now, you just leave it to me, sir. I'll unpack all your lovely things. Oh, yes, it's all going to be lovely, sir. Mind you, I couldn't get here before on account of my friend. We live together, see? Have done ever since. Mind you, strictly platonic. I'll have the rest of your luggage brought up, sir. Oh, this is it. We do travel light, like, don't we, sir? Um, Not like some captains I've known. Never mind, sir. You just tell me your little ways and I'll adapt round them. Oh, it... Oh, stay, darling. Uncle's just had a nasty shock. <laughs> Officer aboard. We're expecting him at any moment, sir. <clears throat> well, gentlemen, my appointment to this ship no doubt came as something of a surprise to you. But with your cooperation, I trust it will prove a success. Ah, Mr. Earnshaw. Long time since we sailed together. It is that, sir. <clears throat> well, now, there's uh, two points I'd particularly like to mention. Now, the first concerns alcohol. The other concerns women. Now, both are all right in their place, but that's not here. An officer must concentrate on his duties with a clear head. Must get aboard, darling. I'll ring you the moment I'm back in London. Aye, aye. People talk a lot about the difference between a cargo ship and a passenger ship. Well, there's only one difference as far as I'm concerned, the freight that's carried. My theory is that passengers are only animated cargo. Mr. Wilson? Shaw sure, Wilson, actually, sir. Won't you join us? Oh, no, I, uh, I don't want to intrude, son. I'm sure you don't. All right, gentlemen, that'll be all, thank you. I should have preferred to have made your acquaintance earlier. Yes, I, I know, I, I do apologize, sir, but I'm staying with the Pestles. Uh, do you know the Pestles, sir? No, mister, I do not. They're charming people, you know. They came home with us on the last trip. Now, of course, these old country mansions are usually lacking in the old modern cons, but they um, offered me a bed. Excuse me, sir. It's fully automatic. It's a marvelous ride. This is your, um, this is your first command of a passenger ship, I hear, sir. It is. And now, if you'll kindly change into something approaching a uniform, I'd like to do a tour of the whole ship, providing you have no further social engagements. There's an absolute Barclay. Seamanship must be the first consideration, Ebbs. But for the passengers, it's the social side that counts. Our aim is to make every voyage a holiday for them. A courtship for the young, a second honeymoon for the middle-aged, and a rejuvenation for the elderly. Aren't you drinking, Ebbs? Uh, just water, sir. You married? No, Sir Angus, no. And it may pay you to remember that the sea and the tropics sometimes have a peculiar effect on women travelling alone. Like gin. Oh, big pardon, sir. No, come in first, sir. I was just leaving anyway. I'll see you ashore, Sir Angus. Well, don't bother. You've got more important things to do. Thank you. Good luck, Captain. Thank you, sir. You'll need it. Excuse me, sir. The passenger list. Oh, yes, Mr. Priddlewell. We full up? Not a spare shed, sir. Highly satisfactory. A lot of females aboard. We need the fire hoses, no doubt. Fire hoses, sir? Oh, well, never mind. I was wondering, sir, if you'd like to go through your social engagements for the trip. Well, what are they? Oh, the usual number, sir. The captain's cocktail party, sports committee, debating society, deck tennis, old-time dancing, cinema, talent competition, divine service, bingo. And who commands the ship while all this is going on? <laughs> bingo, beauty competition, children's tea party. Do the passengers expect all this? The passengers expect everything, sir. 
When's it? <laughs> Place is the sun shining. No, my dear fellow. You can't make real money by working for it. There are only two ways of getting it. You've either got to be born with it or marry it. Tanker, five points on the starboard bar. What do you think she is? Norwegian? Chinese. Mr. J, not for junior officers. Check the position on the chart. Hi, Your colleagues are very health-minded, Canon. They are not my colleagues, madam. I have come on this voyage for a holiday, even for my fellow clerics. Ah, oh, excellent, excellent. All clear? Very kind of you. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Sir! Business not too good, Mr. Frittlewell. Well, I'm ready for the fray now, Bernie. Got to make up for lost time. Just you leave it to Bernie. Pear shaped? Now that the weather's improved, sir, I take it you'll be dining with the passengers. Yes, I suppose so. I better see that list again to choose who's going to sit at my table. I brought the seating plan with me, sir. Well, who arranged this? Head office, sir. You mean to say I can't choose who I want myself? Oh, no, sir. Head office always selects the people who... There we are. Well, you're good, Helen. Cheers. Uh, welcome to the captain's table. The privileged few, eh? A delightful <laughs> privilege. Now, I'm in the chair. What will you have? A martini, please. Martini? Oh, Cannon? Just cider for me, please. Cider for Cannon Swingler and a dry martini. Yes, sir. Uh, not too strong. No, not too much gin, Barbara. Not too much gin, sir. I've got these barber organized, you know. <laughs> This is Judd Coxton. I'm Bill, to you? I'm from Wollonga. This is the sweetest lass that ever crossed Sydney Bridge. My wife, Gwenny. Oh, my word, isn't that nice? How do you do? How do you do? Are you traveling with your husband? No, I'm a widow. And you? I'm just traveling without my husband. <laughs> uh, Major, I was wondering if you could tell us about the captain. Well, they say he spent every night on the bridge since we sailed. Oh, how romantic. How oh, wasteful. I don't know much about the fellow. I'll be interested to meet him myself. Yes, we're all dying to see him. I love captains. They're always so handsome. Lovely uniform. Can't you let them down any further, sir? I'm overstrung as it is, man. Oh, dear. I did think I'd got it all lovely. Got to wear a belt and trust to luck. I'm not laughing, Mr. Ebbs. Don't think that, will you? Oh, it's all my fault, and on your first night, too. Oh, the bum freezer fits. That's something. Marvellous, sir. Of course, you're like Fred Astaire. Evening dress becomes you. Oh, Mrs. Lomax. This is my son, Henry. How do you do? I always like sitting with my back to the engines. And you'll have to lie down on the floor. Oh, what's that, young man? Now, Mrs. Lomax, what'll you have? A little sherry? I'm afraid Mother doesn't care very well. Mother. Scotch on the rocks. What am I going to say to all these people? How about a comical story, sir? I don't know any. Captain Bucklett, quite a nice one. He used to tell it every trip. I've heard him make it last right through to the suite. Went down very well, sir. Well, what was it? What was it? Now you've asked. Passion fruit, sir? <laughs> How's she going? Have you tried Australian beer? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome to the captain's table, Mr. Reddish. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Hey, you know, good I evening. read a lot of your books, and I simply adore them. Uh, very noble of you. I'm writing one now. 
I'm attempting to, but uh, it doesn't come. London, you know, the... Is that it? Oh, no, sir. When he got back to his ship, he looked up the manual and he found out that what the little flags really read was permission to lay alongside. <laughs> they fair lapped it up when Captain Buckle told it, sir. Yeah, well, I'll... I'll turn it down a bit for the ladies. You will, sir. Well, be very careful, sir. Do I look all right? Lovely, sir. Oh. Oh, your socks. You haven't got your suspenders on. Never wear them. Oh, but you must, sir. It spoils the effect. Take mine. Certainly not. Just for tonight, sir. Just to please me. I shan't rest otherwise, sir. Yes, I, I, I really was overtired. So my doctor ordered me a complete change. Here I am. <laughs> yes, a complete change. Excuse me, Canon. Yes. I'm afraid the powers that be have made a slight error. Oh, nothing serious, I hope. Oh, no, indeed, sir. So I've done my best to rectify it. It's just a question of changing the seating slightly. Here okay. we are, sir. <laughs> home from home. Good evening, Canon. I thought you'd like it, sir. They're all waiting, sir. <laughs> Your table's at the far end, sir. Good evening, sir. I wonder if the story about... Whenever I get on a shipboard, it always seems to me a death I, I was wondering if any of you had heard the story about the naval lieutenant. Partaking soup, sir. What? Oh, thank you. No, no, sir. <laughs> no, now, now, don't worry, don't worry. It'll do it good. Well, uh, this naval lieutenant went to a dance on a ship, you see. And uh, he met a young girl, and she was wearing a brooch with little signalling flags on it. Uh, Stuart, brown bread, please, whole meal. Must have plenty of roughage at sea, you know. Very important. Well, she was a very, very pretty girl. <laughs> very pretty. <laughs> and the parrot said, ludicrous, I grant you, but ruddy difficult. <laughs> For whom the turbot? Yes, thank you. Do tell us your story, Captain. Oh, well, uh. Uh, the lieutenant kept looking at the brooch uh, on her chest, and the girl said, um, oh, this was a present from my husband, and the uh, little flags read, I love you. How many flags were there, Captain? Well, I, uh, I'm not quite sure. Oh, pardon me, I just wanted to get the details straight. <laughs> Don't louse up the story, Bill. I'm not lousing it up. Yeah, well, well the, uh, the lieutenant knew all about signals, of course, so... Uh, I don't know any lieutenants, but I knew a lot of admirals during the war, you know, personal friends. But he didn't say anything to the girl. Oh, I forgot to tell you, uh, she was an American. I think it's absolutely beastly the way those American girls get hold of all the best men, don't you? Frankly, it's never bothered me. Uh, but he knew there was no signal for love. Poor boys, they're so sweet and gullible, some of them. Uh, condiments for madam? So he looked it up in his signaling manual. Where did he keep it? Well, in his desk, I suppose. He, he looked it up when he got back. Oh, really? Uh, you don't mind my asking. Well, when he looked at the signal, of course, it didn't read, I love you, at all. I think I know this story. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. What the, 
little flags really red was. Ah, uh, Stuart, I always make my own salad dressing. You better get used to it right away. I shall require some vinegar, uh, tagon vinegar. You have it? Good. Best olive oil, white lemonade, clove of garlic, parsley, sprig of borage. And some salad? Huh? Yes, of course. And do tell us all about it. I'm sure you'll be terribly bored. Mm -hmm. No, we will really? uh, Well, um, the Bismarck was here. We were steaming along, making a smoke. Uh, now, you've got an aircraft carrier, and uh, Anne, you've got a submarine. Now... Haven't we got anything? And I am convinced that... <laughs> All right, all right. Yeah? Excuse me, sir. Are you busy? No, I'm just killing time till we get to Sydney. Why? Well, my name's Tony Millington, and I thought we wondered. Can you marry us? But, surely, she's engaged already. That's all over now. We'd better come inside. Thank you, sir. Look, uh, don't you think that, uh, well, isn't this a bit sudden? I mean, at dinner, you... Dinner, I hadn't met Tony. It, uh, it happened on the boat deck. What did? Suddenly. Suddenly we knew. But it's after midnight. It's late. Well, I suppose you've both made up your own minds. I'll just go and polish up on the procedure, excuse me. Oh. It says here I can't. I can't. Can't what, sir? It is forbidden by the Marriage Act of 1949. But I want to get married tonight. Well, don't get upset. I mean, it's just as big a shock to me. How can it be? You don't want to marry Tony. <laughs> uh, it'll keep for a day or two, won't it? It's not one of those shotgun weddings, is it? How dare you, sir? Now, you may be the captain, but I'm not going to let you insult my fiance. Why, she's the sweetest... All right, all right, all right. Don't go raving mad. Why not be engaged instead, huh? Engaged? I'm holding a cocktail party tomorrow night. Now I'll make a formal announcement then. Now, in the event of an emergency, I don't want you to panic. There is no danger if everyone keeps his head. I saw that clearly enough when I was torpedoed. Every time. I now want to demonstrate the correct way to put on a life jacket. May I have a volunteer? A lady? Oh, me? Down. Do you know how to put one of these things on in five seconds flat? No. Good. I'll show you. Uh, raise your arm, Miss Pia. <coughs> Yes? Oh, excuse me, sir. What on deck for boat drill, sir? Not now. I've just started work. Won't take long, sir. But it's a question of mood, man. Mood. Regulation, sir. It's, uh, it's all a question of touch. Now we tie it. Left over right. Right over left. Otherwise we get a granny. With practice, you can do it in the dark. Those figures are only corrected against the profit and loss under the impressed account system. But the above the line entries will be set down against the items made in a subsequent account. Uh, on my last ship, I used to jot this down on the back of a calendar. Rather bigger problem here, sir. It is, Mr. Brittle, well, it is. 
Oh, where do you wish me to sign? Uh, here, sir. Oh. So, if you'd like to sign some of these blank pages, I needn't trouble you again until the end of the voyage. You remember the old Actian star, Mr. Pittlewell? Very, very well, sir. Uh, the famous old ship. Very clever man, the purser. She'll be coming out of prison next year, if I remember right. Well, where do you want me to sign? Uh, perhaps I'd better double-check, so one can't be too careful, can one? All right, Mr. Purser. Very good, sir. Any time. Always here, you know. All right. Let's run over the one. Yes, once again, shall we? Left over right, right over left. Are you inflating? No, it's all me. Good evening, Mrs. Lomax. I, uh, I hope you brought your son. Yes, I liked it. The thing, the tap in my cabin goes drip, drip, drip all night. I haven't had a proper wink of sleep since we left England. Well, I'll have a word with the purser at once. Yeah. Oh, Captain, I knew you'd struggle back to uh, me. I'm just going to have a word with the purser. But you will come and have a drink with me later, won't you? Well, I'm afraid that uh, I... 25. Age what? <laughs> no, 825, the number of my cabin. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Miss Porter Williams. Who? The engaged couple, sir. They're just arrived. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Uh, excuse me. That's all right. Stand can wait. Ladies and gentlemen, play silence for the captain. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a, a captain has many duties to perform on a voyage. Some of them pleasant, and some uh, not so pleasant. Well, uh, this is one of the pleasant ones. I have great pleasure in announcing the engagement of Miss uh, Annette Porter Williams and Mr. Um, Tony um, Muggs, Dickie Muggs of Brisbane. Mr. Richard Muggs of Brisbane. <laughs> Oh, so exciting. Much better than the brochures. They don't put everything in the brochures, you know. Mr. J, I'll relieve you of the danger of you setting fire to your trousers. Uh, under Captain Buckle... There's only one step to beer in the charge room and women in the wheelhouse. Mr. J, kindly give my compliments to the chief officer and ask him to come to the bridge immediately. You'll find him by number... Um, number five lifeboat, sir. Number five lifeboat. Evening, sir. Mr. Brickwood, what is all this? I beg your pardon, sir? But you appear to be dressed for some sort of sporting event. Oh, Captain Buckle always said the middle watch keepers could dress for comfort, sir. I don't care if you appear on duty stark naked under Captain Buckle. Under my command, company regulations will be strictly observed. Now, go below and put on a proper uniform. And get that chimney stack out of sight. Aye, oh, sir. You wanted me, sir? I did. Mr. J, go into the chart room. Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Shaw Wilson, just what do you think you're up to? I've just been enjoying the night air, sir. I mean, on the boat deck. The whole place is like a rabbit warren. Well, the habits of the rabbits... The, uh, I mean, the uh, passengers are no concern of ours, eh? No, but the habits of the chief rabbit... I mean, the chief officer is very much a concern of mine, sir. I, I, under Captain Buckley. I sir. don't want. You will report to me first thing in the morning. Good night, Mr. Shaw Wilson. Hello, Captain. You didn't come to A25, sweetie. Mrs. Porteous. Oh, call me Daphne. <laughs> Madam, I, I insist you leave this cabin immediately. What am I going to do? Call out the guard. Oh, I... <laughs> Madam, it's after midnight. 
Mrs. Porteous. Think of Mr. Porteous. Oh, he, he's very sweet, too, you know. You love him when you meet him. Are you going to give him a drink? I think you've had enough. But it's my birthday. Come on, give me a little drink. And then we'll have a little talk. And then I'll go. You promise? But of course I promise. Come on, come on. The drinks are out here, in the day cabin. No, 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 Captain. I want them in here. It's much cozier. What do you want? Uh, gin, my angel. Mm, it has a lovely effect on me. And tonic? Don't be mean with the gin, Captain. Company regulations in the middle watch, eh? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Love is the sweetest thing. Da -dee -da -da -dee. Sir? What? Oh, nothing. I was just singing to myself. Join in if you like, Mr. Brickwood. Join in. Love As love's own story, love is the strangest thing. No song of birds upon the wing shall in our hearts more sweeter sing. Mr. J, I don't suppose you've got such a thing as a cigarette, have you? Huh? Once well, I thought it was allowed. Well, only doing my duty, sir, encouraging the social life of the ship. Poor girl was lonely, sir. I love her. If I have the uh, continued honor to serve under your command, sir, it will never happen again. It wasn't me at all, sir. It was the second officer. for a nice little breakfast, sir? No. Now, now, sir. We must keep up our strength. I'll get you a nice little egg. I don't want a nice little egg. Oh, uh, what would you like me to do with these, sir? There seems to be a message, sir. These foolish things will remind you of me. A25. It's the chief officer, sir. Oh. Oh. Morning, sir. Oh, yes, Mr. Shaw Wilson. You uh, told me to report to you, sir. I did. What for? On, on, on the bridge last night, sir. A little matter of being with uh, a lady, sir. Oh, yes. Yes, well. Well, I... Uh, I... 
should have expected from you, Mr. Shaw Wilson, a little more discretion. That's all. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Morning, sir. I'll return them personal, sir, A25. If you only knew some of the things I've taken back for some of my captains, sir. Uh, Bertweed, you realize, of course, that nothing, that I was on the bridge? Of course, sir. Another night like last night, and I'm done for. I didn't know the captains came in for this sort of thing. Why, bless you, sir, he's the prize pippin of the lot. Well, isn't there anything I can do about it? <clears throat> May I speak, sir? Well? You've got to get yourself a wife and family, sir. Now, oh, Bertweed, I can hardly marry and raise a family in a single voyage. Oh, I didn't mean in the flesh, sir. Just something to keep the flies away. It's my friend's niece, sir, so you're quite safe. Just put it on your desk with a few flowers, and it's as strong as DDT. Well, I'll be going to A25, sir. Her name's Alice. Who? Your wife, sir. Oh. Huh. All right, Bertweed, thank you. I shall cherish her. Huh? Lovely girl, sir, before she lost her figure. Two hearts. Staying on board, gentlemen? Well, we've got somewhere. Columbus, sir. Columbo. Two spades. Three diamonds. Double. Thought you'd be going ashore. Military gent next door wants your pipes looked at. My pipes? Yeah, keeping him awake. He says the thing that used to go drip, 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 now goes thump, thump, thump. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. Passengers going ashore. I give you the toast of my favorite passenger, Major Bruster. To Major Bruster. Major Bruster. Maybe you'll get shot by a tiger. Refueling. Oh, no, 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 Chief. I'll, I'll let me refuel you. Oh, not for me, lad. And uh, I'd turn in if I were you. I'm not drunk, you know. No, 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 no. But uh, I'd turn in just to see. All right, Chiefy. All right. Goodbye, Chiefy, old scout. Be good to the boilers. Be good to them. Uh, that's my job. Goodbye, Chiefy. <laughs> Roy George knew my father. Father knew Lloyd George. Lloyd George knew my father. Father knew Lloyd George. Father knew Lloyd George. Lloyd George knew my father. Good afternoon, Captain. Your servant. May I sit? Of course. We are alone. I have a hell of a life. Nobody loves me. 
Poor old Ebbs. Captain, I do believe you've been drinking. I am a drunken beast. Well, you have a lot to put up with. I know, there you understand. Let me hold your hand. Where is it? Oof, thank you. Don't you think you ought to go to your cabin? You know, you're very, very pretty. Yes, I think you'd better go to your cabin. Come along, Captain, and I'll help you up the ladder. Yes, there we are. Okay. I, I don't need any help. Thank you. Hey, you are made it. Didn't need any help. Very good. Shall we? Back early, sir. Hmm. Captain on board? I believe so, sir. Good, I want a word with him. Some of his crew don't seem to be able to hold their liquor ashore. Here we are. It's my wife. Uh, it's the little woman. Uh, Kathleen. Oh, really? Mm. And my two little darlings. Charming. Now, where's your cabin? In there. Good. Come along, Captain. to think of Mr. Albert being poorly. Oh, nonsense. He's drunk. Uh, I'm going to find some aspirins, make some coffee. We must get him on his feet before we sail. Poor Mr. Albert. I must just peep. Secured, sir. Thank you. Port 15. Port 15, sir. Port 15 on. Pull ahead together. Pull ahead together, sir. Too short blast, sir. Too short blast. Don't forget the beauty competition this afternoon, will we, sir? Never mind, sir. It's all a laugh, sir, isn't it? It's all a giggle. Yes. Oh, that'll be the madam, sir. The madam, sir. Good morning, Captain. You asked to see me? Yes, it, it's very good of you to come. Uh, please sit down. Mrs. Judd, I want to offer you my deepest apologies for... You have every reason for complaint. I... How are you this morning, Captain? Mortified. I seem to remember trying to force my... attentions. You were perfectly charming to me. Was I? Of course. But the, then you're not going to complain to the board? Nobody will ever know. Mrs. Judd, you're very kind. Nonsense, Captain. I only gave you a helping hand, just as your wife would have done.
Main, 84%. Main, 84%. Teeth, 97. Teeth, 97. Girth, 92. Girth, 92. Rump, 84. Rump, 84. I don't get it, Major. Hmm? Quite simple, so many points from top to bottom. That's the maddest way to judge a beauty contest. I was in the cavalry. 38. One hundred percent. Captain. The captain. Look, kiddies. The captain. Kiddies. Three cheers for the captain. Not as possible. And, and then we play games. You will stay, sir, won't you? Uh, well, uh... Of course you will. Now, I'll take you round. You know, they'll never forgive me if I don't introduce the captain. <laughs> now, this is uh, uh, Terence Coke. Huh? His people are at your table. Oh. Uh, who are you supposed to be, little man? I'm not supposed to be anybody. I'm me. Oh, I see. Well, uh, are you having a good time? No, I want to play murder. I always play murder at parties. Well, uh, we'll, uh, we'll play murder later, huh? Uh, uh, Captain, uh, uh, this is Harriet. Ah. Oh. I want to play murder now. <laughs> uh, when do the games begin, Miss McGibbon? I'm looking forward to those. Uh, any moment now, sir. I'm so glad you want to see him. Oh, yes, I do. I do indeed. Uh, just high spirits, sir. Terence didn't mean it, did you, Terence? Ah! Allow oh. me, madam. Oh. Just to show there's no hard feelings, Terence. Children! Children! 
so for many years to come. Well, thank you, Purser. In fact, sir, I wanted to ask you, as it's the last night of the voyage, to accept champagne at your table, sir, as a token of my personal esteem. Oh, come now. Well, sir, I'd much rather give it to you than leave it untouched in the ship. What, you mean that nobody on board drinks champagne? Well, consumption's been very low, so they seem to have lost the taste. Well, you leave that to me, Purser. I'll tell them what jolly good champagne the company's got aboard, and they'll be ordering it by the bucket. Very good of you, sir. Last night of the voyage, ladies and gentlemen. I drink to you. To all of you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> lovely gig of water. Mm, a good vintage, I must say, Captain. Now, this is with the compliments of the company, and I hope you'll order lots more during the evening. He wants us to order more during the evening. What? All right, quiet, ladies and gents, please. Now, I'm going to propose a toast. For the bloke has done a damn fine job this trip. Anyone who can spend an afternoon enjoying himself with my kid deserves a medal. <laughs> to the pommy, I'd take me out up to any day. Ladies and gents, the captain. The captain, the captain. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. And so do they all of us. And so do they all of us. Send her the the left, so I, well, I, I have to drink champagne. <laughs> you dance well, Captain. Oh, do you really think so? <laughs> Going well, I think. I'm very proud of you. It's a great success. Alone, young lady? Yes. Oh, we must find a partner for you. Ah, Mr. Shaw Wilson. Yes, sir? I have a pleasant duty for you. I'm sure you'd like to dance with this young lady. As a matter of fact, sir, I'm rather busy at the moment. Must encourage the social life of the ship, eh? Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, may I have the uh, pleasure? Uh, Thank you. This is fun, isn't it? I've, uh, I've been itching to dance with you ever since we left London. <laughs> You're a wizard dancer. Where do you live in England? Crofton. There's a, there's a castle there or something, isn't there? Yes, that's where we live. In the castle? Yes, Daddy bought it last year. Uh, it's so silly of me, but for, for a moment, you know, I've forgotten your last name. Richard. Maud Pritchard. No relation to uh, Pritchard Motors, I suppose. Yes, Daddy does make cars and things. Uh, I, I, I believe I know your brother. Oh, no, I don't think so. I'm an only child. Oh. You know, it was worth waiting to dance with the most beautiful girl on board. <laughs> I'm not beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to me you are. <laughs> and to me, you're a wizard dancer. <laughs> Well, tomorrow it'll all be over. The end of the voyage isn't necessarily the end of the world. There's something I... Well, there's something I want to tell you. Yes. Oh, 
I've emptied the pool. Oh, never mind. There's plenty of nice and cool water over there. You're fuller than a board in our pudding. Let's go down the back. Yoo-hoo! Ah-hoo! What was it you wanted to tell me? Oh, yes. Well, uh, it's about that, that photograph. Which? The one in my cabin of my, uh, my wife. Oh, yes. Well, you Excuse see, it's... Me, sir. Major Broster wants to have a word with you, sir. Not now, surely. I think you ought to come, sir. Where is he? By the dance floor, sir. <sighs> Where the blazes has the captain got to? Where is he? <laughs> Just look at that, sir. Smell it, taste it. Well, what's wrong with it? Wrong with it? On your recommendation, I ordered and paid for champagne. Paul Rocher 49. And what do I get? Cider. It's impossible. Well, try it then, madam. Try it. Well, madam? It is cider. <laughs> Mr. Brickwood, kindly fetch the purser. Lining your pocket to the passenger's expense, eh? Well, we've caught you. The company shall know of this. I assure you it will be put right. It's all a mistake. Mistake? You're a crook, sir. We're slipping. We ought to have known the old buzzard wouldn't fall for it. If you'll all just keep calm and wait for the purser. The purser refuses to come, sir. Mm -hmm. Ah, so it's mutiny too now, eh? Oh, pipe down, you old fool! I'll get you with his head. I'll cable Sir Angus. You'll lose your command. I'll have you hounded out of the company. <clears throat> but we're both men of the world, damn it. We may have had our little differences on the voyage, but surely we can part good friends. Better men than I have fallen under the magical spell of the ocean. Major Broster. The situation on which I intruded last night doesn't call for an official report. But, uh, no doubt it would be of interest to Sir Angus and a cause of some distress to your wife. Ah, uh, yes. I mustn't hurt my wife. Besides, she's a woman of extremely quick temper. Surely we can come to some understanding. Yes, of course. Uh, there's just one thing. As captain of the ship, I have to enter in the log the reason why we altered course last night and why the ship was searched. But you have to put in every detail. I can't leave anything out. It's against the law. I might lose my command, Major. Captain Ebbs, let us not be too hasty. I have, as you know, great influence in the line. Perhaps if I were to write a letter... A letter, Major? To Sir Angus on the line's magnificent voyage. First-class captain. Must be retained in his command. Now, that seems to be an excellent idea. Uh, allow me to dictate it. Are you ready? My dear Angus. My dear Angus. <clears throat> Very good morning to you, gentlemen. I trust I find you well. Thank you, sir. What's the matter with you, Mr. Shaw Wilson? You look a little down. Me, sir? No, sir. As a matter of fact, it's the happiest day of my life. Indeed, why is that? I'm engaged to be married, sir. To the most beautiful girl in the world. Well, congratulations. May I ask the lady's name? Pritchett Motors. At least her father is. She's an only child. I suppose that means you'll be giving up the sea. Yeah, that's the uh, general idea, sir. Uh, if I may, sir, I should like to thank you for the uh, introduction. Not at all, Mr. Shaw Wilson, not at all. We're alongside, gentlemen. Alongside where? In Sydney, sir. Already? Well, it keeps on interrupting. Take it easy, brother. Don't you, you take it easy, brother. You're in good hands now. Sherry for you, gin for me. Oh, dear. Farewell drinks are so sad, aren't they? 
Oh, why call it a farewell drink? Because it is, Albert, dear, isn't it? You remember I had something to tell you last night? Yes. Oh, uh, it's a confession, really. Oh, not an unpleasant one, I assure you. Uh, one that I hope will uh, put things, um, yes. you and me, in a different light. Um, well, you see... Come in. Pardon, sir. One of the passengers wants to see you, sir. Tiny, I thought I told you distinctly I was not to be disturbed. Seems rather special, sir. Oh, all right. Shan't be long. Don't go away. No, I won't. I want to thank you, sir, for taking such good care of my little girl. She says she's had a wonderful trip. It's something she'll never forget. Well, it's something that I shan't forget either. Well, you're a lucky man. Um, what's your name? Harold. Yes, Harold. You're a lucky man. Ah, oh, Captain. I wanted to say goodbye. I've behaved rather badly, haven't I? Well, uh, uh, Mrs. Porsche, sir. Uh, no, call me Daphne. All right, Daphne. You saved me last night. I thought I ought to make amends to you. The Major was quite a surprising man when you got to know him. <laughs> nice person, Mrs. Judd. Yes, delightful. But I must say, I never thought you'd succeed in hooking you. Hooking me? Oh, don't look so innocent, Albert, darling. Surely you've heard of the Widow's Cruise? You mean that she was planning to... To marry you? Of course. Yeah, but I... I, I... <laughs> I'm already married. That photograph. You don't know much about us girls, do you? Well, goodbye, Albert, dear. And thank you for a lovely trip. Us girls. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir, but the madam says she'll see you at dinner as she isn't disembarking till tomorrow, sir. Bert, we'd kindly tell Mrs. Judd I've been called away on duty and wish her a very goodbye from me. Goodbye, sir, but I thought you and were... And we were wrong, Bert, we'd. I'm going up on the bridge. Let me know when she's left this ship. For good. Thank you. 
Thank you. 